On the 22nd of July, it was time for the one and only JTW 15-man rivalry rumble. This match is arguably the greatest match I have ever filmed. It is personally my favourite I've ever filmed on my YouTube channel, so I recommend you definitely watch. You've got three seconds to click off this video and watch before you find out who the winner is. Three, two, one. Unfortunately for me, coming out at number five, I lasted 17 minutes until I was eventually eliminated by Zach Rowe, the eventual winner. I then had to think, what comes next after the rivalry rumble? Anthony's Open Challenge. On the 29th of July, I did the first ever Anthony's Open Challenge, where I would bring my JTW Intercontinental and World Heavyweight Championships to the Tramper Ring and give my opponent, who is completely random, a choice. Do you want the JTW World Heavyweight or do you want the JTW Intercontinental? They would then pick the championship they want and we would have a match for it. For me, the first ever Anthony's Open Challenge opened with Malasorto and it was a brilliant competitive match. I then proceeded to kick ass and take names all through Anthony's Open Challenge. I beat various opponents under different names. Definitely check out the series playlist. It's in the link description below, as well as the rivalry series. Until that fateful day when I took on Zach Rowe. On the 2nd of September, 2018, I came out to the Tramper Ring to do my usual stick and have an Anthony's Open Challenge. The person I did not expect to answer the Open Challenge was my old bitter rival, Zach Rowe. Zach came to the Tramper Ring and successfully beat me for my JTW Intercontinental Championship. I wasn't going to let Zach hold that championship for long. On the 9th of September, I reclaimed my JTW Intercontinental Championship in a very hard fought two out of three falls match. Zach got the first fall and Neron got the second fall. I hit him with about three curb stomps before he would even go down. But I was once again your JTW Intercontinental Champion. Unfortunately, this was a very dark time in my life. I issued another open challenge and got beaten again for the Intercontinental Championship. A title I had just fought my heart out to reclaim was just snatched away from me like that by Bad B. Bad B beat me for my JTW Intercontinental Championship fair and square. I was really starting to question whether I could actually even carry on, but I did. On the 12th of October, me and Bad B had a false count anywhere match, which resulted in me beating him with a submission move. I had him in the LaBelle lock with a Master Sword from Zelda. Wrestling really does get like that sometimes. I just had to grab the nearest weapon to me. But luckily for me, I made him pass out on my upstairs landing backstage. And I was once again your Intercontinental Champion. So, I continued to defend both my championships and open challenges all the way up to the 22nd of January. I had a match against a panda. He begins to become a reoccurring issue later on, but that's not what we're talking about right now. It's what happened after my match. A hooded figure came and jumped me from behind. A big lariat pretty much taking my head off my shoulders. That man was later to be revealed the debut of J.D. Bailey. A right pain in the arse. Now... I then had to continue thinking, right, when's JD Bailey going to attack? I carried on with the open challenge. Two days later, on the 24th of September, I had some friendly competition with Zach. Now, after our two out of three falls match, Zach gained a lot of respect for me as I gained a lot of respect for him. Me and him became friends. We became partners. However, JD Bailey was my problem. On the 13th of March, I defended my JTW World Heavyweight Championship against JD Bailey. After delivering two Rainmakers, the second of which I landed pretty much vertical on my neck, he pinned me for my JTW World Heavyweight Championship. I was no longer JTW World Heavyweight Champion. 
However, and I quote, I still have a belt on my shoulder and breath in my lungs. So on the 21st of March, I continued the Open Challenge and continued to defend just my Intercontinental Championship. This time, a former champion who wanted to cash in his rematch clause, Bad B, came out to fight me. Not so lucky this time, eh, Bad B? I managed to beat him. It was what he said afterwards that really caught my attention. Bad B grabbed the microphone and issued a challenge. Bad B claimed that him and the other thug of JTW, the man that was currently wearing my World Heavyweight Championship, JD Bailey, had been working together. So they issued a tag match. Bad B and JD Bailey versus Joe Anthony and a partner of my choosing in a Fool's Count Anywhere tag team match. Of course, I picked Zach as my partner. So the stage was set. And on the 25th of June, me and Zach took on Bad B and JD Bailey in the JTW tag team match. Fools count anywhere. I beat the crap out of JD Bailey. JD Bailey beat the crap out of Zach. Zach beat the crap out of Bad B. Bad B beat the crap out of me. We took each other to hell, but in the end, I took a chair shot to the head that rendered me obsolete for the rest of the match as Zack got absolutely decimated in the tramper ring. So badly that we had to physically call medical attention as Zack would not wake up. He had been beaten up so bad he was out cold in the middle of the tramper ring and he had to go to the hospital. But don't worry, he was fine in the end. On the 5th of July, it was finally time for me to invoke my rematch clause on JD Bailey. This time, however, I used the stipulation recommended to me by a viewer. A three out of five fools match. Same as two out of three fools, exactly the same rules. Just an extra fool, really. So, me and JD Bailey went at it. I got hit in the back by a panda. This panda will not go away. He's still loitering to this day. But in the end, I managed to beat JD Bailey and reclaim my JTW World Heavyweight Championship for a record sixth time. No one else can say they've done that now, can they? So, after that, I proceeded. I carried on doing open challenges. I faced many different opponents for both championships, considering I once again had both over my shoulder. But one thought had been occurring in my mind for a long time. I've beaten pretty much everyone. If they've beaten me, they've only done it once until I've got my win back. I'm running out of things to do here. We need to shake things up a little. So although a lot of you didn't like it, and a lot of you were shocked. On the 23rd of September, I walked to the tramper ring. I put down my World Heavyweight Championship. I put down my Promo Championship and I held on to my Intercontinental title. I bought it into the tramper ring and with a heavy heart, I called out my best friend, Zach Rowe. I then proceeded to ring the bell for a match for the Intercontinental title. As I laid down in the ring, Zach covered me one, two, three. You're new. JTW Intercontinental Champion, breaking my record reign, Zach Rowe. Then it was time for the Zach Rowe Open Challenge, and this is where we are currently. I'm defending my JTW World Heavyweight Championship whenever I can. Zach is defending his JTW Intercontinental Championship in the Zach Rowe Open Challenge whenever he can. Be sure to stay tuned. JTW just got great again. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the entire history of JTW up to the current date. Obviously, Anthony's Open Challenge is still open. Zach Rowe's Open Challenge is still open. I'm done with Kip Clips now, so it's onwards and upwards from here. I do hope you enjoyed. I do hope you learned something. If you're new to the channel, obviously, please be sure to give this video a like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in future videos. Goodbye.